Hello everyone, it's John Brewer here with uh, Practicing Company, South Florida's premier restaurant broker, uh, South Florida Restaurant Buzz. And it's my honor to have with me now Mr. Mike Goodwin. Hello John, Mike. good morning. Good morning. Mike is coming into a space that used to be called The Zone, among other places in Boca Raton and Federal Highway, and we're catching him in the beginning of his concept here. Just wanted to get a little overview from Mike on what's going on and what's happening here. Uh, Mike and I actually met each other a while back through a friend, uh, Beth Azor. Uh, we actually knew each other a little bit from Las Vegas, kind of ran around but never physically met each other over at the Palms. Uh, what did you do over at the Palms again? I was a director of uh, entertainment for the Palms uh, for a short period of time, working with uh, George Maloof and, and uh, Paul Pusateri, running the theater, the lounges, everything to do outside of the nightclubs. Gotcha. So concerts and things like that. So tell us, what brings you to Boca Raton, South Florida area? What's your concept? Um, what are you going after here? Well, um, I'll tell you, what got us here was we spent a little bit of time overseas working in the Bahamas, and we worked in uh, Punta Cana for a bit, doing the entertainment for some casinos and resorts in those areas. Fell in love with the climate, really love the Caribbean, the, the hot, the, you know, year-round summer, and uh, my wife really wanted to come to Florida, so we decided to move to uh, Boca Raton. The schools are great here. Uh, the community is fantastic, and uh, we feel like the business environment for what we do uh, is, is right. Cool. So, and you found this space? Yeah, we started looking around. We had two different concepts that we were looking at developing. Um, this is the one that, that uh, we're taking to fruition. It's going to be a, uh, um, a, a brewery, a brew pub, and uh, with a full uh, uh, menu. So we're going to be you know, having a great restaurant here, and uh, we're going to grow all of our own vegetables. We're going to grow all of our own herbs and spices right here on premise. Um, and we're also going to be a live music venue to kind of carry along what, what my past has been in the entertainment world. So kind of combining the, the fresh craft beers, cra fresh craft foods with some, some crafty jams. Oh, cool. cool. So you're going to be booking bands, uh, rock and roll DJs? Mostly, mostly live band. I mean, live bands. Some DJs will perform here during different times. We're going to be very uh, cognizant of noise levels during the lunch hours, the, the early evening hours, and then let it rock and roll at night. Okay, so you'll be open at 2 a.m. I imagine. We will be, and we'll be very family oriented. We have huge patios surrounding the building. Right. We're going to have all of the all the accoutrements that you would find at a typical brewery in a tasting room with the games and the things on the patios. Um, and then tie it in with you know more of your restaurant vibe on the inside. And, and uh, but we also will feature all the sports. We'll, we'll feature UFC fights. We'll feature all the football, baseball, basketball, everything, soccer, you know, hockey. So basically, a good meeting place for for people, food, beer. Yes, maybe. it's going to be a casual. Uh, the atmosphere is casual, but the food and the beer is is serious. Okay. Well, tell me a little bit about uh, the way the beer is going to be set up. I know we kind of talked about. Uh, where you're going to be placing everything? Um, well, I think that, that uh, the, obviously the craft brewing business has grown exponentially over the last 10 years, and right now we have over 5,500 breweries throughout the United States that are craft brewers. Oh, wow. um, they're now taking about 20% of the market share of, of beer sales in the United States, which is amazing. And uh, one of the things that I found uh, as I'm getting in, into it more involved, getting more involved in it, is that um, it's kind of like sushi. You know, where some people just don't eat sushi, but when you introduce them to a California roll, they start getting the taste for the different varieties of sushi. And I think right. the craft beer is similar, that we're going to be bringing them in with the Craft Beer 101. We'll, we'll be able to introduce them to a lighter fare, to a, to a uh, you know, a, a less boisterous flavors, and then bring them up into the more challenging styles. And, and uh, we're excited about being able to have the whole genre of beer schedule or, or uh, types here. For, or, you know, created and, and, and designed here, but we're also really cognizant of the hot environment. People want something fresh and light and refreshing, right? And so we're going to really feature and, and, and focus on that type of beer. I think, especially with the with the weather here, I've I've noticed lately with craft brews, and, and I'm a I'm a layman brewer. I brew stuff at home, you know, five gallon batches, and I have a, a lot of enjoyment with that. And I'm kind of the same way. The IPAs, the triples, I mean, they they get to be a bit much. But what I'm finding now, what they're starting to do is, I think that they're they're you know, they're, they're doing an IPA, but they're kind of getting fruit overtones in there. So yes. they're kind of catering to, um, you know, a, a South Florida beer when you're on your boat and you're sweating and you're active. It's, it's a beer that you can, you can knock a few back and have a good time with. It's not going to overwhelm the palate. Or get you too full. Because right. a lot of the big beers, you can drink a couple of them, but then you really feel like you've eaten a meal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, you know, a lot of the, the domestic beer drinkers, they like to drink beer throughout the day, watch a game, drink six, seven, eight beers. And if you do that with a 
strong craft beer at eight or nine percent alcohol craft beer you'll be on the floor sure so you know the sessions and the lighter beers are, are really becoming a very popular in the craft world sure know? and i think that it should be here you know absolutely absolutely i think the other side of that too is as i've gotten more into beers is uh, if I'm eating very bold foods, a spicy food, I kind of like a stronger beer that's going to stand up to those flavors too. So, exactly. you know, you get the best of both worlds. Now, we, we were talking, I mean, we, we talked a little bit about with, um, uh, with Funky Buddha or uh, the one that just got sold to Constellation. Mm -hmm. And they're more of a distributor, which means you don't really have the food. There's kind of been some regulation issues. Can you tell me a little more about that? Yeah, sure. By Florida law is... Uh is one which the brew pub um, is restricted to on-premise sales, whereas the brewery is is able to sell and package their beers to go, as well as you can take it individually on premise, off of premise. Um, I think that the the reason why that is because the lobby for the for the big breweries, the the buds and the coors, have a lot of stronghold on the on the you know the government here in a sense of their lobby dollar. And they don't want a brewery like myself to be able to steal uh, shelf space from them in a retail store, and hence the re the regulations that hinder certain things from happening. Um, I believe that you know it's it's and it also hinders the brew the breweries from making food because right. they can't have a real kitchen. Hence, they have the the food trucks out front, which is a secondary. You know, it's fun, but it's certainly not keeping you on premise for very long. So right. I think that you know there's some there's some laws and regulations that I think hinder the overall brewery business in Florida at this point. But I think that as time comes, we'll, we'll loosen up. Some and of those you can't even do growlers, right? You can't even do if you made a special growler and I came in and I ordered your chicken wings and came in with a growler. You can't refill that growler for me to take off premises, if I understand correctly. That that is the way that the law is today. So if you're going to have Crazy Uncle Mike's beer, you're going to be drinking it at Crazy Uncle Mike's. Right. But. It's the same that bruzy has been living under for the years that they've been open, and, and uh, the regulations ha are not new, um, but I think they're, at, they're dated. Okay. And there's an opportunity to maybe look at the future and say, what makes sense for the community? What makes sense for development? What makes sense for safety? Sure. And, and those kind of things, because if you want to take your growler home and eat at home and have a beer with it, it seems, it seems fair that you would want to drink your favorite beer, and if that happened to be mine, I you know, would love to be able to sell it to you. Sure. So you've been kind enough. This is you're you're in the uh, you're in the demo phase right now. I believe still kind of salvaging what you can in the space. And uh, I know you've got plans that, that that are very detailed about what you want to do. Putting the uh, the uh, what, what do they call the the, the brew uh, the, barrels? Yeah, the kettles and, the, and kettles. The, yeah, the kettles is the actual brew house. Mm -hmm. And then you you've got your fermenting tanks. Um, your bright tanks and that's uh, going to be kind of a display in the front, right? Yeah, in fact, that was another thing that I was making a point of you know kind of brewing 101 when you walk into our location We're not hiding our system. It's not behind a wall. It's up front and center You'll be able to watch the brewer do his thing during the day if you come in on brew days um, You know, it'll be restricted from access to walk in there and, and get close to it in the sense of walking through it without a tour um, But it will be very close. It'll be so close that you really don't need to and you'll be able to watch and see and it's gonna be pretty interesting because we're putting it up front and center we're making a showpiece of our property as the brewery. Excellent. Excellent. I know you guys are working on the facade too, and I'm going to show some pictures to go along with that and what you guys are going to do. You've been kind enough to let us come in here, and we're going to check back on you from week to week and time to time and Great. see how the whole uh, crazy process for Crazy Uncle Mike's comes along here. We appreciate that. Uh, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. And uh, you're going to show me around a little bit. I will. Look around. You're going to point out some of the changes you're going to make here. And. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's such an interesting business, the, the beer business right now, and, and how it's evolving, and, and uh, uh, great to have you here in South Florida and being a part of it. We're, we're you know, excited to be here, and we appreciate the, the welcome that we've gotten um, as we've started to delve into the business aspects in Boca, um, from the council, from, from everybody that has to do with authorities here. It's been a pleasure to work through the city process. Um, got a great group with Everglades uh, Group, which is a construction uh, GC as well as an architectural firm that's on board designing it, and, and that team's been fantastic. So we're excited about being here and, and look forward to uh, uh, serving the community and, and doing some special things. Hey, John. We're outside right now underneath the portico share that we're actually going to be taking off of the building because it really dates it. We're going to take down the awning and we're going to take down those, those uh, Italian pillars too because they don't really fit. When you see what's going to be done, it's going to be tin roofs and no more Pueblo tile. It's going to be very modern looking brewery style building. So you're going to like what you see. Come on in. We're going to remove these doors and move them to the center. And this will be our brewery right here. 
It's going to be a little bit dark. No, we got good color here. So our brew kettles will be in this area. We're going to have a 10 barrel brewing system that's going to be steam fired. If you know anything about brewing systems, there's direct fire or steam fire. Steam fire is a lot more controllable and it's what they use on the bigger systems. So it'll be something that we'll be really proud to be out, out here. And uh, it's a brand new system. It's already been ordered and, and we're excited about having it. So we're back in the main dining room and, and the entertainment facility. So the giant bar that you see today in the middle of the room, that's gonna go away. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna have one of the longest bars in Boca Raton. It's gonna go all the way from this door. It's gonna come out and go all the way down past the third door. And it'll also have seating on these outside doors from when you're on the patio. So you're gonna have seating indoors, seating outdoors at the bar. I'm really excited about that. I think the people in Boca with our weather being beautiful, 12 months of the year, a little bit of rain today, but other than that, it's a great place to, to have indoor outdoor seating. No, I see that a lot. I see a lot of restaurants and it's usually, especially for happy hour, things like that, it's the busiest area. The, the people can sit outside, but feel like they're still having a bar experience. Well, when we walked in too, where we were, where the portico share is today will be an outdoor patio as well. The outdoor patios will actually surround three quarters of our building. So if you're an outdoor enthusiast, like a lot of us are here in Boca, this would be a great place for you to come dine. Fantastic. All this out here? Yeah. So wrap around the front and the back of the building. So basically all of these here will be, that'll be bar, and those will be bar tops with four seats at each one. Yeah, and, and then the punch outs will be taken down. So there'll be bigger patio and garage doors at the wall itself. Fantastic.